detail you can give to me because I'm not sure exactly the position or what we're talking about. So anything else you've got on it would be helpful, and I'll just follow up um, if I have any questions with you, Beth. Okay, and then I will follow up with Judge Spouse to get something in writing that the, the grant can be changed. Thank you. If that's okay to you. Thanks. Pardon? I guess that brings up the subject of how much um, extra payroll are we going to have because of the COVID? Are we tracking all that? And was there ever a decision of how these employees are going to be paid? Um, I, I personally didn't really understand if they, they are now working from home, but if they come in, that is an additional hourly pay. Does anybody have an explanation for that? And should we be watching the pay levels? We are. We are um, coding it. Um, the first payroll is this goes is due today. We have been coding it um, on advice from our computer software and um, Irwin's office. But yes, you are correct. If, if someone comes in, they're getting extra pay. And if you notice the transfer that I had, are you guys hearing me? Yes. Yeah. Just so, okay. Uh, the transfer that I had, I transferred some from my clerk's um, position to an area where I I can cover my my people. Um, but that was the executive order that the health department and the EMP are not closed. The custodians have 20 hours per week that he can come in to keep everything sanitized. Um, the, also, it had to have permission to, for the other employees to come in um, through they go through me and then I contact the president of the board of commissioners, Bill Brown, and he okayed it. So, and a lot of people are not coming in as a handful. I don't know about the courts because they don't check with me. But right now my office has got, um, we had to get payroll done. Um, I think the area plan is gonna have one day this week. Surveyor is gonna have one day. The, Clerk has not done it until yesterday, I believe, and which was Wednesday. So this is very minute right at the moment. Just a handful. So when we say there, so are these just are these just people that cannot work from home, or I guess that's what I don't understand. If they if they can work from home, why are they having to come in? It's at the department has discretion. And um, Callie is the only one that is set up to work from home from the clerk's office. Um, but she's been coming in. I've been coming in because I, yeah, I can do something at home, but I've got to keep the mail going. I've got to do um, claims, payroll. It's just very complicated. So there are some employees that are set up for that. Pardon? I didn't hear that. I, I was just listening to what you were finished and saying. Oh, I thought you said Because I think that was just my main question is is that you know we probably should be should be watching double paying people because of course that's going to be i would assume way over budget before this is over with determining on when they open up and allow people to come back well like i say i have mine covered um i don't know about the other whether they can transfer within their budgets that's something that i i really need to talk to you some of you about to see if we should ask them if they can transfer within their budget. Um, Cameron here wants to say something. I 
and see, I've been coming in, I guess, uh, not, I've been coming in every day and, and checking emails and phone calls, and we are getting a lot of permit applications, which I've been taking out and perfing um, and kind of doing it that way. Instead of people just sitting still in the water until this is over with, I'm trying to keep people working. So once I start checking emails and calls up, it seems to be piling up. So don't get behind. I'm working every day, but I have not brought in Gloria. So I will bring her in one day tomorrow to do a deposit and then that's it so it's it's just just been me but it's just for stuff that has to be done and then that's it the rest i can do from home yeah i think we i completely understand the department heads and the, the elected officials that that was the last meeting that i kind of assumed that's what the position is going to go that the elected officials would be coming in and the department heads will be coming in of course because they have to make sure everything in their office is either delegated or being done so my, my question is, it's just if we're having people double paid and double working, if they're supposed to be working from home, it can't be done home and it just can't be done home. The people who uh -huh. have in, you know, coming this way, they come in only when necessary. Um, for instance, like Tara, my real estate. Deputy has been in one day for like five hours, and that's because we have set up all the people. Um, she's going to come in this Friday, and then we'll be all caught up speeds because that's something that you cannot do from home. You have to do it with any the reporter and the assessor's office. So we've lined that up, and you know, it'll probably take a morning, and we'll be caught up on the deed. That's what we're trying to do is to keep everything going like normal. Um, but doing it all in one one day, trying to anyway. And I think people are knowing that we can't do some of this, so they're holding up on, on some of the deeds. So that's my update. And you and did you say that we're tr and did you say that we're tracking this as a as yes, separate we from we're keeping track of all expense the COVID? Yes. Okay. Yes, we are. Uh, Beth, on the front, um, there was two lines in the budget that were kind of anomalies. So the uh, the recorder's first deputy through um, through the end of March, this was front on the April report, was 45.71% of budget. And the assessor's right. second deputy was 45.69% of budget. Is that because of... COVID overtime, or is that just uh, no. just a no. payroll glitch? It's not. I don't know why you mean a payroll glitch. What you're paying is, um, let me look at that real quick, okay? Okay, that's on the general revenue and expense report. To the recorder and who else? Uh, recorder's first deputy and the assessor's second deputy. Assessment the deputy gets paid out of the reassessment for the second half of the year. The recorder should be the same. So, I oh, well, that's right, because of how it was changed. Okay, that's right. that answered my question. So, that's great. Okay. All right. Do we have anything else? Uh, I, I wanted to bring one thing before the board if nobody else has any, or before the council if any, nobody else has anything. Um, so several municipalities, I'm not aware of any counties at this time, have started, um, this is 
I guess, unprecedented waters that were on. Uh, oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Scott. I don't, I don't know about anybody else, but I can't understand him at all. I can't hear who? There's a lot of, this is back in, there's at a all. lot of talk going on on several of you. No, I, I don't have a question. <laughs> Um. Yeah, I'm not getting you, Scott. I'm just a um, concerning the uh, EMA that's Okay. All right. Hey, Scott, do, do you want to just text me real quick your question? You're, I can't hardly hear you at all. I don't think any of the members can. So if you could just text oh, me, I'll, I'll put it out and figure it out for you. Okay. Yeah, even, even Scott, just, just put it in the chat section. Oh yeah, that's even better. That way we can all see it. Yeah. All right. uh, so just briefly, um, I, I don't think that we can take action on this today, but I think that you know, as a group, uh, it's incumbent on us to, to yeah. look to the county resources and, and where we can put them to use for the uh, for the residents of the county. Um, there. Um, there have been a host of response from governmental units across the state, um, everything from revolving loan funds to businesses to, you know, uh, uh, nutritional assistance to the county resident or, you know, to the municipalities, res uh, residences, residents. Um, and fortunately, um, I, I, the, the data says that Carroll County has not been impacted as as bad as Tippecanoe County and Howard County have so far. Um, the but just for some scale, um, the the unemployment claims over the last three weeks are in the neighborhood of 16 million claims. 16 million first people filed for the first time for unemployment. 16 million, the highest three week total in in history since. Uh, this began was in the neighborhood of 1.6 million people. So you're looking at a tenfold impact um, to the previously the worst three weeks in, in U.S. history. Um, so, you know, we, we're definitely in uncharted waters, and I think that it would benefit all of us to think about, you know, as a body, you know, what are going to be our uh, priorities, uh, you know, and, and, and how we can help the, the people of the county get through all this. And uh, my, my personal view, uh, and, and just want to get everybody to kind of give some thoughts on this, is, um, you know, the, the federal and state governments have given us a lot of programming, but, you know, there are still people that fall between the cracks on, on programs. And, you know, at the end of the day, you know, our biggest priority is that, you know, people survive, that they have the, the, the nutritional support that they need to, to get every, to get across the finish line and get out of this. Um, and that, you know, our businesses are uh, protected as possible. So um, what the county can do, you know, is obviously most much more limited to federal government, but I think it is important that people know that that uh, the reason they you know pay tax dollars is so that um, uh, services are provided and that everybody's taken care of. So um, just kind of open that out there, and I don't think we have the opportunity to take action on this today, but something that we need to definitely keep in the on the front burner here. Absolutely. 
I did see that, was it um, Flora who is opening up some finances for the businesses for the small business loans? Because yes. I do know that as of this point, the small business money is gone. And this is my personal thought of owning a business is that we're not going to see it because the bigger company that the banks are already affiliated with, they're going to give those to the bigger companies because even though it's 1% interest, they're going to get those. And us little guys are going to be overlooked. And as I already know right now, we are struggling. I don't care who you are or what you are, whether you're open or you're closed, the small businesses are all going to struggle. And Absolutely. there are some that are not going to make it because they're going to fall through those cracks. So I don't, not quite sure what you're asking us to look at, Josh. If you can kind of pinpoint what we need to look at, well, I think it's, it's, it's a program like that, or if it's um, uh, laying people off so they can file that unemployment. To the, I mean, I know the program unemployment program is also changing. Um, so I'm not understanding what you want us to look at, but I, I have a feeling our small businesses are not going to see much help. Yeah, and that's, I mean, I, I'm not advocating for any particular program at this time. Flora did put that out. Um, you know, I, I think, and Beth can probably speak to this, Flora's program is a low interest loan. 1% for five years. Why well, did they did they say the the term for sure? Yeah, it's one percent for five, five years. Daryl Daryl texted me last night about it. Okay, well, the last I heard that that term was somewhat in question, but um, I mean, regardless, um, the uh, logistically, uh, you know, uh, Beth, can, and I don't know if you can speak to this or not, but. Um, how we, we would administer that would be uncharted territory again, and who would collect the money or anything like that. Um, uh, but I, I did have one question for Tracy. My personal, right. my personal thought on that. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah my, my question, Tracy, was do, um, uh, when you said the money is gone, is that the PPP or the ED, EDL or whatever the the uh, the other? The small the small business loan money that they put out. It is uh, the applications that they have received is is gone. So I believe it's going to Congress either yesterday or today to where they fill that with more money. So I mean. I haven't, I don't, I'm, I haven't got any news today yet, but I'm sure that they're going to fund some more. But here's another thing to look at with our small businesses in a town like us, and even I'm sure you can opt to this, but mm -hmm. we already have mortgages. We already oh, have the employee expenses. So to give us 10 or 15, 20, 25, $30,000 loans, we're not going to be able to make double mortgage payments, even if you defer it for a year. This is not going to go back to the normal normal that it was three months ago. Mm -hmm. So to make a double mortgage payment in a year, I see that becoming even more difficult. So me as a small business, I don't want to take out another mortgage. So I'm having to, you know, lay people off and do sure. less hours. And so I'm not so sure giving a loan to the businesses. I'm not for sure who would take it. I mean, Ethan, do you have a thought about that? Well, I just want to say, you know, with like the, what the Trump administration put out there with the loans for small businesses, is they are offering them small businesses that have excellent credit. And who in small business has excellent credit is what I want to know. That's that's the only the super companies like Tracy was talking about, you know, we the big stores. That's little guys. We're not like she said, we're not going to get any relief at all from this. Um, I think I, I don't know if we can look at it through the rainy day fund and try to try to fund anyone paying uh, a business tax in the county a, like a small business tax in the county if we could look at that um i'm certainly open to any and all options i definitely i definitely agree with Tracy. 
you see, because we're, I'm in here at my restaurant right now, and we are really struggling right now to, to keep going. Uh, we've laid off, I think, seven people now, and uh, we are running a very skeleton crew, just trying to survive each day. And it's hard when you can't have, I got a dining room, I can't have a single person in there. So. And that's what I'm saying is that maybe if we if we have some way they can contact the county, the businesses or whatever, I don't, if they could contact us and see, we need to know what they need, what they need help with. I'm not so sure that they're going to take out loans with us. So I'm not mm -hmm. saying it's a loan, but there needs to be some kind of communication and avenue that they can turn to, whether it be... I mean, I don't know who they turn to, whether it be the Chamber of Commerce or, but that's what I think would be more helpful right now is finding out what they need or what can we do to help them. I appreciate that very much, Tracy. Can I uh, speak, uh, you know, the Delphi mayor's uh, got this grant program and he said that rather than make loans, he suggests it's better to make grants in the Comet today, uh, yesterday. Uh, because if you make loans, it's it, you may be up against lending laws that we are not prepared to meet all the requirements of a lender. So, so there are grants that don't need to be paid back, and he's got $198,000, uh, at least for the city of Delphi businesses, supposedly, that he, he's going to be offering uh, I, I don't see the amount. I think it's five thousand dollars grant. I mean, it's not a lot, but you know, it, it could help a little bit. Uh, and maybe we could do something similar, possibly, uh, to make to make a grant uh, available after hearing what Tracy said about, you know, you already you already have loans, so you don't want to really, you know, double up on your loan payments right now. Exactly. Well, I think that I'll needs to be part of the discussion. Um, I, I do want to clarify one point about the purpose of the rainy day fund. Sure. Um, the, um, in the abstract, the purpose of the rainy day fund is to, to be able to maintain current governmental services in an economic downturn. So for example, uh, in 2008, um, the, the county saw a precipitous drop in, in revenue. And right now we have about 2.6, 2.7 million dollars in the rainy day fund. Um, that could theoretically be, if we want to maintain our budget and maintain the number of officers, maintain the number of, uh, you know, first responders, and, and continue to provide our level of government, but we see a million dollar or million and a half dollar decrease, um, and, and no one knows what that number is. Uh, you know, that's why I spoke to that earlier with Baker Tilly. I have no idea. Uh, but we're, we know for an absolute fact that the unemployment claims are 10 times higher than they've ever been in history. So what that's going to look like in terms of revenue, we just don't know. Um, I mean, it could, it, could, it could completely erode um, our entire rainy day in one year if we wanted to maintain the same level of governmental spending. So uh, I think it's going to be a combination of things that we're going to have to look into uh, to make sure that that we, you know, handle things in a fiscally responsible manner, but uh, at the same time, our response to the citizens, and uh, it's going to take a lot of creativity and a lot of uh, out of the box thinking to get everybody through this in, in in good order or as good order as we can get them there. I just think we need to look at whatever we can do to possibly help small business because without them in this county, this county is going to be devastated. And I, I just think we need to try to help whatever we can do. No, I, I, I agree. It's just, uh, uh, you know, I, I, what, I, what, what I don't want to do is, you know, deplete the rainy day and then our revenues dip by $2 million or a million dollars or whatever. And the only solution is like what we had in 2008, where we're laying off uh, police and first responders. Um, so you know, we have to we have to make sure that we know what's going on. The 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 
list certified shares or yeah so our, our income tax revenue is certified in august there's no indication that that won't be done in august again so after august we will have a better uh sense of what our revenue figures will look like for next year but um you know august is you know obviously what four months away and i don't uh, think you're gonna see them lasting that long yeah so that's the yeah, that's, that's the challenge. That's the, that's I mean, we're thing. we're week to week, not month to month, and so right. Yeah, yeah, and unfortunately, it is a uh, it's a rolling ball. I, I call it the triple of events, where the worst have not even hit yet. Everybody's looking at how many people have the virus, what it's doing to our communities, but. The triple effect has not even came down yet. People are going to get these checks. It's just like when people get taxed. They get these checks, they start spending with them, but then they run out. Yep. So these people who are not working and these factories that have yet to lay off, prime example, IPC is still up and running. All it would take is for IPC to get infected and then all those people, are, that factory is going to shut down. Yep. And then there's another of the triple, trickle effect where the paychecks are going to stop and I still say the small businesses, we're going to see the effect in July, August through December. That's oh, going to be when we're hit the worst. You know, just so, as, I mean, as a record. Josh is saying that. Finish your thought, Tracy. So Tracy, as, you broke as, up there. For as, as we look at this. I, I know we want to do something as soon as possible, but I, I think that Josh is right. If we wait a couple months, I think the small businesses are going to be at a point where they know what's going to really happen. And maybe we can get some, some input from them to see a plans, how we can help them. But you can't wait and, and just see what's going to come in for the next year. You, I mean, because like you said, nobody's going to know. Can, can I re make a recommendation? Why don't we Why don't we somehow advertise that we want to get a Zoom meeting with every small business person that would get on a Zoom meeting with us and discuss where they're at? You know, we need to put that in the newspaper and advertise it, and and uh, and then get the word out to our friends. I I didn't know as much a few minutes ago as I do now, and. Uh, you know, I know we are fortunate to have Indiana Packers still working. I know there's four different heat processing plants in the U.S. that have shut down. One one particular one kills 1,700 head of cattle a day. So I've sent many of you a video that I got this morning at YouTube that says that these packing plants are, you know, they are providing food for America. And it's not that the farmer doesn't have the cattle to slaughter. It's that the packing plants don't have the, you know, they're not up and running. So, so you've got a glut that, that is going to, you know, they're going to have to shoot their cattle according to this YouTube that I saw this morning, because, you know, I mean, you saw it on national news this week, they're turning green beans under, you know, if anybody saw that on CBS news, uh, they're, they're, they're just taking a plow and turning under green beans. And I think it was anyway, one Southern state. Because you know the supply chain needs to needs to keep up and going in order to you know keep you know keep uh, people that aren't going to stores so they don't buy so Kroger does and order more green bean type of thing. It, this is serious, and I I don't know what to do about it, but I agree we need to make every move and, and encourage packers to stay open. Shutting shutting packers down would. I'm just glad we have Packers in Carroll County. I mean, the, the amount of people that work there and are employed there and, and you know, pay their gas, buy their gas and, you know, buy their water from the, from the city, you know, I mean, it's, it's huge. And as, as you pointed out, Josh, I mean, the, the tax revenue in 08, I mean, this, from what I understand, this is going to be a lot worse in 08. Uh, and, it, and 08 was very bad, Josh, as you pointed out. Yeah, well, I, I think that in 20, you know, 2021, as we approach the budget cycle, we're going to have to be very conservative and, and you know, tighten our belts for sure. Um, but uh, regardless, 
Um, uh, I, I like your idea. Uh, I, if everybody's okay with it, I think that uh, maybe hosting a uh, public forum of some sort, uh, and if everybody's okay with that, Tim and I would be glad to uh, put that together. I think that's great. Could we possibly, yes, could we possibly set up a email account to where they, the businesses, if they have questions or if they have needs, to where it could be like a, they could email and we could get emails so we could have that on paper, be, you know, so we would have it instead of businesses having to call and say, I need this, I need that. Could we set up like a special um, emergency email account to where they could give us what they need and could we advertise that also possibly? Or, I mean, just pick an email address that we already have that we could use? Um, just somewhere that they could give their idea. voice in. They could... Because um... I know sometimes it helps, like this last week, it has just helped me so much contacting my other business friends and knowing that I'm not in this alone. And some of the ideas that they have come up with is like, oh, I could do that, I could try that. So an email line to where we're going to get our most information from the businesses of what they need. We don't, we can't foresee what they're going to need. We don't know what they're going to need. Like Nathan, I mean, like Ethan said, week to week. And I think an email address would be a good location to vent what they need or what, you know, even weekly or monthly or however they choose to use it. I mean, you might not hear from any of the businesses, but I think that's a pretty good idea. Okay. okay. Yeah, I guess great. Um, I think Beth may have stepped out. I'm not sure. I saw a blur go by her screen. But um, in the interim, um, I'd be happy to, to field those emails and then disperse them to the uh, to the council, and then uh, we can have. I, I know that adding email accounts is a bit of a challenge, um, but we could make uh, an email account. Right. Oh, there you go, Beth. Um, would that be a, a, a chat? Oh, she's muted. Um, but uh, Dude, what if Beth got the emails and sent them to us all or from the county or whatever we're Yeah, it's uh, well, I, I'm trying to keep the load I, off of Beth's I've dad. Heard a on this she's one. way, way, way yeah, deep in the weeds. She's probably got her hands full. Yeah. 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 I, I truly believe that maybe what about the chambers? Helping out with that. Yeah. I yeah, think I'd be happy to coordinate with that. I need to counsel. Yeah, I would just like to make sure that we're kept. Well, the, the county loop. chamber that would really help. Yeah, I think I think she does a great job there at the chamber, so I think she would, would do very well with this. Well, how about I, is everybody okay Understood. if I just reach out to Julia and, and see if we can coordinate a plan? Sure. It would probably yeah. be, uh, it might be better for her to just post the open, or the town hall and, and be point for the emails. Yeah. I think her doing the, the town hall would be a good idea, but I think the email situation needs to go to a council elected member. I think businesses would feel more comfortable talking to their elected officials. Representative. Okay. Well. Yeah. Well then, email the council. I mean, they could just pick pick a council member and email them. I mean, why would we have to have a special email? We could have the comment advertise all of our all of our email addresses for the county. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. If you're going to run no, an I'm advertisement of, you know, we're here to help or whatever you're going to say it, I, 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 that's what I want is just, I mean, yeah, that would be a great idea. Just email all of us and, I mean, put all of our emails on there. That's fine with me. But just from an ease of doing business, it would probably be better if there was one email and then we batched it on our end and then sent it to the entire council because, you know, from... I think you would get more responses if somebody had only put in one email versus having to put in seven. True. Uh, or but so, maybe somebody they know though too. For if you're, you know. 
Well, that yeah, I mean, that that could be possible, but I think we ought to. You could you could put in the advertisement that that you can you can email any of your elected officials and and then just put yours as the main contact and and then and then leave it up to the person to to contact whoever they like. Yeah. And, but that we're just all from a data perspective, that, I mean, it would be nice if there was one so that that data could be compiled. Whereas if you have seven different people get an email, um, you may not get it all into a central hub for responses. I think we ought to advertise right. our emails though, along with it, you know, every, every, just so it's in the comment, our emails. I mean, that doesn't that make sense along with the yeah. one that you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. Just saying we want to hear from the people. Yeah. Right. Okay. Because personally I want to read I want to read each email. I don't want you to go through the emails and give us the information that you think we'll need. I want to read everybody's emails because from a business standpoint, I want to hear their detailed things of what they need help with and ideas and that. So that's for compiling information and then I would assume I would I would much rather have the email forward to you so I can read it all. Yeah, yeah. that well that was my intent. Um, <clears throat> that's what I was saying, putting all the and all the emails the, together <laughs> yeah. in some format. Yes. So then should be your account email. Is Debbie on here? That's the personal emails. Right. Just counting. Right. right. Yeah, just to the council emails. Right. Right. Tim. Tim. Did we have to make a motion to do something no. like this, or Are you is it just a consensus that we're going to put the ad out? Well, if we're spending money, we probably should have a motion. I'll make the motion. All right. I have a motion by Ethan Brown to advertise. A uh, relief fund. Uh, well, yeah. Uh, well, I don't know. That Not a relief fund. Well, I mean, you can make me your motion, whatever you want. Um, I think a relief that, study or something, or what should we? Say? Yeah, just a um, a, uh, a town hall, maybe. Yeah, I like that. I would kind of, I would kind of name the app as like a helpline. Yeah. Like okay. a, a help call, like a, a call out for help or something that, to that effect. Lifeline or somebody else. Okay. Uh, is there a second to the motion? Second. Paul Ryder. I'll second it. Second by Paul Ryder. Um, should, should we um, give a dollar amount not to exceed? Like, I mean, just for the advertisement and whatnot? say $500 or something. Oh my God. From our budget. Sure. All right. So the motion on the floor was to establish uh, a helpline slash open house. Help, well, I guess a helpline and open house uh, with the uh, advertising expense not to exceed $500 by motion made by uh, Ethan Brown, seconded by Paul Ryder. Everybody good with that? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any further discussion on the motion? All right. See, then we'll call for a vote. Uh, Brown? Yay. Radcliffe? Yay. Martin? Yay. Stoffer. Uh, Doc, you're muted again. Ayers. Yay. Ryder. Yay. Clue, yay. Hey, Doc, you're muted. Hold on. All right, go again. I got you unmuted. Go ahead, Doc. Okay. I'll vote. I'm in full sympathy. Everybody in business, large or small, but I don't feel that the council is in the back of the business. I really don't think there's a whole lot we can do. So that, I'm saying, our, our uh, elected officials in the house are already voted. I don't think there's
there say anything much that you can really do other than perhaps a sounding board. So your vote is nay, Doc? I'm just confirming. That is correct. All right. Motion carries 6 1. Um, well, we survived the, we survived the uh, online meeting, everybody. Appreciate it. <laughs> anything, uh, anything else anybody would like to bring before the order here? Hope everybody had a good Easter. Uh, did you want to have public comment? Oh, yes. Thank you, Eric. Um, uh, Tim, has anybody uh, raised their hand or asked for comment? No, we've had some chats uh, periodically that have all been answered uh, through the course of the meeting. Uh, Jack, I think Paul spoke to your question as far as what the city of Delphi is doing uh, in terms of the grant money. Okay, um, Jack, do you have a further question? Yeah, I, I just wanted to mention what I had said in the chat and kind of what Paul had brought up was that is what was advertised, but I found out about the online, the Zoom meeting after the meeting, so I have no idea what the Delphi actually decided on it. Um, but I'm hoping they decided something positive, which will help businesses in Delphi. But I will say this, though, on the topic of the whole, that um, the only thing I'd like to see, I appreciated getting the invitation for the meeting, but if the meeting, the information so that other people can get in can be a little bit better advertised, I guess is the best way to put it, so that more of the public that want to can attend. Um, I received the invitation from Tim because of what I'm on. I know Debbie's here and Mary was here, but everybody else that I've seen today has been county employees or elected officials, and it would be good if we can get the information out to more of the general public. Mm. Thanks, Jack. I'm sorry. I just got back on. My internet went down. What was that, Jack? I was just saying that uh, if the information on the meetings can be advertised somehow so that more people can know about it, um, because I think anybody that's been in today have been ones that received the email with the link to get in. So. Um, I don't know what can do about it. Just like I mentioned with the Delphi meeting, I found out about it after, after the meeting had already occurred. So I have no idea what they decided yesterday. That's a really good point. And I uh, appreciate the feedback. You uh, can continue to get better at doing these and hopefully we don't have to do it for much longer. We just don't know. Tim, did you see a comment from Miriam there? Yeah, she's uh, saying that she would like this posted to YouTube so the general public can observe and uh, participate if need be. Usually, Debbie okay. posts all the meetings to YouTube. So. Very good. Um, so if there's no further public input, I think we would uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. So move. Second. Me, Ethan Brown. This is our second. Paul Ryder. Seconded by Paul Ryder. Um, oh, uh, Debbie uh, just texted me and said she would like to be unmuted, please. Hello? Josh, were you asking me a question? I'm sorry. Yeah, Tim, uh, Deb, uh, Debbie Lowe just texted me and asked if you could be unmuted, please. Sure.
DUA JAM